Uh, so we start our session. Uh, good morning. Uh, today we will have uh, two ward down scenario discussion. One on suspected rupture urethra and second will be acquisitional injury. Dr. Debayan is in RK. The third year junior resident at uh, Rapkish Mission, Shreyapadishan, Bhuvaneshwar Medical Sciences. So we will face the scenario. And with us today is uh, uh, Professor Debangshu Swarkar. He is Professor of Virology at uh, IPGM and Eskima Hospital. So Dr. Swarkar will take us through the scenario. Uh, so Devan, this is the first scenario. Just read and wait for Dr. Swarkar to ask you a question. Just read the scenario. So 40-year-old gentleman post-RTA came to the emergency with unable to pass urine. How will you proceed? Then Dr. Swarkar will go through this. Okay. Uh, uh, Devayan, so yes, sir. you are a JR3, you are called in the emergency and you went there and see the 40 year old general, uh, gentleman post RTA with emergency. What are the specific histories you would like to take? What are the specific things you would like to examine first? Uh, sir, uh, I would like to uh, I'll, I'll ask about the history of the nature of the RTA. Uh, and uh, where he had uh, uh, experienced the injuries, and uh, I will inquire about any pelvic uh, fracture. Devan, they... Devan, yes, sir. Yes, Devan sir. just I like to interrupt you. When the question is like this, yes, your sir. your approach should be: this is a RDA. So before you go into taking the history, you should answer that I will uh, follow ATLS protocol for management of this patient. So before you go into the history. The first part of the management would be ATLS protocol of ABCD. Yes, sir. And then yes, you started that. Okay. Because examiner has asked you what history will take. But your approach yes, for the history would be uh, you first go through the ABCD of ATLS protocol and then go to the history. History okay. will be the part of secondary survey. Okay. okay. So you should start like that. Okay. Yes. In uh, emergency, never for, um, forget to do the ATLS. Okay. Yes, sir. So uh, I will uh, go through the ATLS protocol and uh, I will check the airway of the patient. If there are any uh, injuries associated with the airways, uh, then check the breathing circulation, uh, expose the patient uh, and look for any injuries, uh, specific in, uh, injuries in some specific areas. I will look for any pelvic fracture or uh, if there is some associated pelvic fracture, I will... Uh, uh, I will just uh, uh, wrap some uh, 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 blanket which uh, if it's near me and just stabilize the pelvis and uh, look for if there is any blood at the tip of the uh, penis and that will help me to uh, know if there is any injury uh, associated to the urethra. Hello. Hello, sir. Ah, yes, yes, proceed. We are offline for a few seconds. The wire. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, I'm, uh, am I audible now, sir? Yeah, yeah you are audible now. Uh, sir, I will uh, start the management according to ATLS pro protocol. I will uh, look for any uh, injuries associated to the airways. If the airway is stabilized, then uh, we will look for breathing, any assisted breathing if needed or not. Then we will go to circulation. We will give a bolus of fluid of 250 to 500 ml and uh, look for uh, the response to uh, the fluid bolus. And accordingly, we will manage. We will expose the patient and look for any uh, injury uh, to the specific areas. For example, if there is some pelvic injury, uh, pelvic fracture associated, then we will uh, uh, just, uh, if there are, uh, we will just uh, uh, wrap some uh, blanket which is uh, near us so that we can uh, just make the pelvis stable. We will look for any associated injury to the urethra. Uh, patient may come with uh, blood at the tip of the penis. Uh, we will look all these things, sir. Okay. Uh, so let's come to a scenario. You have examined the patient, airway, breathing, and circulation is everything is stabilized. 
So what are the things when you should suspect that this patient is having a pelvic fracture or any associated urethral injuries? What are the things when you will suspect this? Okay, sir. Uh, 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 the patient may come with a bl blood at the tip of the penis. Then we can suspect there is some urethral injury. The bladder may be palpable uh, and uh, above the suprapubic, uh, in the suprapubic region, and it may be tender, which may uh, and the patient will be unable to pass urine. That will signify. Yes, I yes, would sir. like to approach this question in a different way. Dr. Shargar has asked you, when you suspect the patient has got fractured pelvis and urethra, the most important is the mechanism of injury. If yes, it is a minor injury, then it is unlikely that patient will have pelvic fracture. If it is a road traffic accident and you feel that patient was run over by a vehicle or he was hit by a vehicle and he has got a major road traffic accident and the same accident, some other people have died. So that indicates that it is a major violence. So if the history of injury is severe, that is one. Second is, most of these patients of fractured pelvis will present with shock. Yes, sir. So patient may have pain in the pelvis, patient may have uh, respiratory distress and uh, these are the other parameters we can point out to the diagnosis of fractured pelvis. And one syndrome that is given is he was unable to pass urine. And, yes. and you should not encourage the patient to pass urine. So these are the points in history. And when you examine the patient, you find the features of shock, hypotension, tachycardia, and then come to the local examination. So your answer should uh, proceed like this. So that that gives a better approach that yes, you know how to approach a patient of rotary accident. Yes. Please continue. Okay, next. So this is a scenario. Uh, you suspect the patient has a pelvic fracture injury. You see there is echinosis over the lower part of the abdomen, suprapubic area, and around the hips. There is blooded meatus. So there is every possibility that the patient is having a hip fracture. No, sir. Just a minute. Just close it. Hello. Uh, yes, yes. Audible. So, you do not find any palpable bladder, but other signs of pelvic fracture is there. So, what are the possibilities? Uh, okay, sir. So, uh, there may be a bladder rupture, sir. Uh, bladder okay. rupture. Anything else? Uh, uh, anything uh, else? You are working in a tertiary hospital. Anything else you would like to know? from the relatives of the patient? If the uh, patient uh, had any associated kidney disease? No, it's not that. See, you are working in a tertiary care center. Maybe the patient was taken to a hospital in the periphery where he was necessitated for maybe... Dr. Shorkar, you can keep the video off. Okay. Because sound is getting stuck. Okay. Uh, yes. So you do not know whether he was uh, as resuscitated properly in the previous center. Yes. So before you say this patient has a associated blooded injury, you must ensure that the patient is resuscitated properly. Even after resuscitation, if you cannot see the palpable bladder, yes, then you suspect this patient might be having an associated bladder injury. Okay. Okay. So suppose this patient has a the uh, one. Yes. 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 So you have. So what next? The patient has a palpable bladder. Blood at meters, so you suspect this patient has a associated blood injury. What next? Okay, uh, in this patient, uh, uh, we will 
do a retrograde urethrogram, uh, the patient has an associated bladder injury, sir? No, no, no. This patient does not have an associated bladder injury because the bladder okay. is bladder is full. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will. Uh, uh, if uh, we have the facility of uh, retrograde urethrogram in our uh, hospital, then we will go for a retrograde urethrogram. Uh, if, uh, if we see that if uh, mm, there is no uh, 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 major transaction, uh, high riding pr prostate or like those things, then uh, we will uh, try for a catheterization, a uh, sing single attempt of catheterization by the most experienced surgeon and uh, uh, with ample lubrication. De Devayan, De De yes, you sir. said uh, if your hospital has a facility, what facility need for doing a retrograde cystodotogram? What do you need? Uh, sir, uh, we need, uh, uh, simple we need only uh, x-ray machine, sir. That so, is, so what? So you have yes, the facility? Sir. Yes, I so have the facility. You, you In periphery, your... sir, there may not be yeah, a extra no, facility. You are preparing yes. for the exam. You are preparing for MS exam. So, during the exam, you will be knowing that, yes, this is a uh, investigation that can be done in uh, a moderate setup. Yes, sir. So, okay, you need to be present. You have to be present and you push the contrast. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, contrast uh, through the urethra and uh, uh, see where the uh, injury has taken place. It can be just a mucosal injury. It may be a partial transaction or a complete transaction of the urethra. So, yeah, okay. okay, I'll come to that. But before you uh, ask the patient that this patient needs a retrograde urethrogram, what are the two primary requisites you should have before going for RGU? Yes. You cannot tell any any pelvic fracture injury. You go and get a urethrogram done. What are the two things? Uh, so, uh, so the uh, pelvic, if there is an associated pelvic fracture, then it should be stabilized first. Sir. The patient should be resuscitated, and once stable, we will uh, go for RG. Yes, what about pain X? That is the most important. What about thing? the pain X? Yes, pain X and resuscitation. So you have to be sure this patient is properly resuscitated before you shift the patient to an emergency X-ray room. First thing. Second is you have to have an X-ray pelvis at least AP to know this patient has a stable fracture, fracture and this patient yes. can be positioned properly for a RGU. Do you know what is the proper position of RGU? Is it sir? Is it needed in MS MS uh, exam? We can discuss. No problem. We can discuss this. Okay. We can discuss. Do you sir, know I the proper know, position of uh, for M RGU? Sir, I don't know, sir. Okay. Basically, it's a 30 to 45 degree lateral position of the pelvis. Okay, the the limb which is closer to the lower limb, which is closer to the surface, should be 90 bent in 90 degrees, and the upper limb will be uh, 180 degrees. There is no flexion of hip. So after that, we do a arduritrogen catheterization. Okay. So what is the idea you are planning for an emergency X-ray in this patient who is Critically ill. Why do you want to do this? Uh, so, if there is an associated pelvic injury, if there is a pelvic fracture, we have to first stabilize it. Then, a pelvic fracture is associated with uh, uh, shock usually. So, uh, that should be uh, controlled, sir. And uh, again, sir, if, if there is an associated urethral injury also, sir, then we have to uh, make a way for the urine to come out, sir. See, the idea is you want to grade the severity of the injury. Okay. Uh, if you know the types of uh, injuries in RGU, what are the types of injury? Uh, yes, sir, uh, it may be a uh, mucosal injury. Maybe, maybe a sir, partial cut or maybe a complete transection sir, of the urethra. Okay, it's not like that. It's uh, one, two, three, four, and four A. Okay, starting from no injury, only stretching is one. 
type 2 is supra membranous injury type 3 is which uh, goes below type 4 is accidental bladder injury the only idea of doing an emergency rgv is to differentiate whether i can do catheterization or not and whether i need to exclude this patient immediately or this patient will suffice with a simple supravic cystostomy suppose a patient who has a type 1 injury there is no mucosal discontinuity only stretching so this patient can be managed with a simple catheterization simple catheter. and you know yes you know you are not going to do any harm if you try a catheterization type 2 and 3 you know there is either a partial or complete injury so this patient is not a patient which you should try a catheterization type 4 is a patient type particularly type 4 and 4a is a patient who has an associated bladder neck or bladder injury you know this patient will need an immediate surgical exploration so by doing a simple rgu you can dictate the management okay that is the only idea okay suppose this patient is not hemodynamically stable will you go for a rgu no sir no then what should you do uh, in that case so in that case i will uh, resuscitate the patient give uh, according to the atsl uh, protocol if the patient is in shock we will uh, see uh, give a fluid bolus see the response if needed we will uh, calculate the amount of blood loss if uh, okay, you have, have to give blood trans yes sir. we have to you give have blood trans then uh, then what uh, then uh, if there is an associated uh, Uh, fracture i have to stabilize the fracture uh, if there is a pelvic injury we have to uh, stabilize the pelvic injury then okay, we will go for a done by your orthopedic colleagues what about the urine okay sir uh, if, you have uh, to divert the urine na no? yes sir then uh, uh, if uh, uh, for at first if uh, uh, we will just uh, do a simple uh, perform attempt for a single uh time attempt for a uh, urinary catheterization with a foley catheter a single attempt to be done by a uh, experienced surgeon with ample lubrication and gently if the catheter goes in and urine comes out then uh, it is done if uh, it is not possible then we will go for spc sir we'll go for spc so okay. can you tell me what is the exact site site of spc uh Uh, sir uh, it should be done in a full bladder and uh, the site is uh, two fingers above uh, the uh, the pubic symphysis sir no uh, the it is partially correct it should be done in full bladder and it should be approximately at the midpoint of upper border mm -hmm. of symphysis pubis and the umbilicus okay why it is so you know why it is uh, not just 2 cm or 2 fingers above the symphysis pubis because that is that sounds more safe okay so this is important for future reconstructive surgery so you may not be knowing but if you do a very low uh, supravic cystostomy while doing a, uh, a definitive surgery in future after 3 to 6 months it creates a lot of problem during the surgery so it's better to do just in the midline uh, midpoint between the symphysis pubis okay so you are not yeah. audible sir yes yes am i audible now yes 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 sir, yes, sir. okay so it should be between the midpoint of symphysis pubis and umbilicus yes sir okay So can you tell me the steps? Yes. You sir. have done SPC? Yes, sir. I have done. Sir. Open or SPC? Uh, sir, I have done open method and also with a trocar, sir. Okay. Suppose this is a scenario. Your orthopedic colleagues has opened up uh, a patient for a um, pelvic fracture and suspected colonic injury. There is no colonic injury. They are operating on the pelvic fracture, and on that time you are called for open cystotomy. So what you will do? Oh, well, during exploratory laparotomy, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, sir, uh, usually exploratory laparotomy is uh, done 
through a midline exploratory incision uh, extending above and below the umbilicus. So at the lowermost point of uh, uh, the incision, from there we will uh, insert we will insert a uh, Foley's catheter uh, intraperitoneally and uh, into the bladder. Uh, and why intraperitoneally? You can't see the bladder extraperitoneally run down. Yes, sir. we can see that, sir. Uh, we can go through that plane also, uh, the extraperitoneal plane, but uh, it will be very easy for us to do an intraperitoneal because so since what, it is under. What you will see is there's a lot of blood in the pelvis. So your orthopedics colleague says there's a lot of blood in the pelvis. You go low down. So will you dislodge that uh, hematoma in the pelvis? And do a cystotomy or do something else? We so won't not, dislodge the clot, not, sir. Yes, yes. You should not go close to the clot. You do a high up superbuic cystostomy through the dome. Okay. So never did be tempted to do dislodge this uh, pelvic hematoma. Otherwise, you can kill the patient. Okay. Uh, tell me the steps of uh, closed SPC, supravic cystostomy. Yes, sir. Uh, so we give a uh, uh, two centimeter one to two centimeter incision uh, at the sir, as you said uh, at the uh, mid in the midline uh, at the point between the umbilicus and symphysis pubis in a full bladder. We uh, before that we give um, uh, local anesthesia in the sub, uh, first first we give the local anesthesia, sir. Uh, after lo uh, localizing the space. And uh, so one thing we aspirate uh, with the 10 cc syringe, we aspirate uh, from we, the bladder to confirm the position of the bladder, whether it is full or not. Then uh, at the midpoint between umbilicus and symphysis pubis, after we have instilled the local anesthesia, we give a uh, 1.5 centimeter incision, transverse incision. And uh, 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 then we introduce uh, the trocar and cannula by uh, the boring technique and uh, and gently so that we do not uh, we do not injure the posterior wall of the bladder uh, we just uh, by boring technique we go inside the uh, bladder and uh, when we have uh, gone inside the bladder there is a give away sensation we remove the uh, cannula and uh, if the urine comes out, we uh, uh, the position of the trocar is confirmed that is inside the bladder. Then we just uh, introduce the catheter through the groove of the trocar and uh, into the bladder, and uh, we inflate the balloon of the catheter with the. Uh, okay, uh, fine. So, what is the direction of force during introduction of the SPC trocar? Is it ninety degree? Is it? 30 degree approximately. So approximately uh, 45 degree down. Yes, it's not 90 degree. Otherwise, you might injure mm -hmm. the posterior bladder also. So in exam, you should say two things. Sir, I'll be doubly sure that the bladder is palpable at least two fingers above the point I'm making an incision. And even after making an incision, you should aspirate and confirm aspirate above. You should confirm that you are not going intraperitoneally. That is the two most things. Many times you get SPC trocar, which is not SPC catheter, which is not seen in the bladder, which is in the peritoneum, or it has injured the trocar. So being doubly sure that you are well below the superior point of the bladder is most important thing. And the second thing is direction it should be around 45 degree towards the pelvis so that you do not puncture both the anterior and the posterior wall. Okay, fine. Uh, so what next? You have done an SPC, patient is saved, patient has a stable pregnant fracture, he's ma uh, maintained conservatively. What next? Uh, when do you send the patient to urologist? Uh, uh, the uh, catheterization is uh, prolonged, usually uh, after uh, the, uh, the associated injury uh, and the pain associated with the uh, from the pain from the other injuries uh, when it uh, has subsided then after 8 to 12 weeks we do um, a urethroplasty sir. We, uh, okay fine uh, yes sir. so what are the situations so 
there are many uh, options for treating a pelvic fracture with an injury. The initial, you can initially go for a primary endoscopic alignment. You can go for a delayed alignment. You can go for a delayed reconstruction. It's not needed in your exam, but you should know what are the things that will indicate that this patient needs an urgent exploration. You, can, you cannot put this patient for delayed treatment. One, two, but three. If there is if there is an associated bladder injury, sir. Okay. Uh, Second. Uh, sir, uh, if there is, uh, if uh, urine has extravasated into the pelvic space, sir. That is a bladder injury. Yes, sir. Second. If there is an associated rectal injury. Okay. That is an indication. And third is. If on X-ray or CT scan you find any bony spicule which is abutting the bladder neck, or sometimes you can find a bone inside the bladder, bladder also. So these are the three indications where you should explore the patient immediately. And fourth indication is if you if the patient has been open for other general surgical indications and you are called, you should do a SPC and explore. Okay. But even then, you should not explore the pelvic hematoma. The last, uh, the another question you are asked in exam is: If you suspect a bladder injury, you do a you do a RGU and uh, you, you suspect a bladder injury. Can you tell me what are the types of bladder injury we can find? Sir, so it may be an extraperitoneal bladder injury or an interperitoneal bladder injury. Okay, how does it look on uh, RGU and MCU? Uh, uh, so on MCU, uh, due to the rupture of the bladder, uh, the bladder is empty and the urine has extravasated outside. So it looks like a uh, dew drop sign where the uh, dye has spilled outside and the bladder is empty. Okay, and, and this is in which which type of injury? Uh, uh, so uh, this is in the extraperitoneal injury, sir. Are you sure? Think. See, the bladder is an extraperitoneal injury, extraperitoneal organ. So, okay. so if there is an injury which is very close to the bladder neck or close to the bladder neck on the lateral wall, where the dye will go? The dye will be concentrated in the extraperitoneal space. Yes, sir. At the same time, there will be some dye in the bladder also. Okay, so you will see the bladder along with contrast in the extra peritoneal space near the base. So it's a cup on saucer. Okay, appearance. But if the patient has a direct blow to the abdomen in a full bladder, in those cases, the patient will have an intraperitoneal bladder injury. Yes. So intraperitoneal bladder injuries are mostly bigger because that happens in full bladder. Mm -hmm. So most of the contrast will go or dispass inside the intraperitoneal mm -hmm. organs. Peritoneal. So you'll see... Is it clear? No, no, audio was off, but one minute. So in, okay, in extra in peritoneal rupture, the, uh, the contrast will extend the peritoneal cavity. Yes. In peritoneal organ, the contrast is extravasated in the peritoneal in cavity. Peritoneal so organ. we'll see flex of contrast within the loops of bowel. In extra peritoneal rupture, you can see the bladder. Some amount of contrast is there, is and some amount of contrast will trickle from the bladder neck regions, both the sides extraperitoneally. So it will give an appearance of cup on plate appearance in extraperitoneal rupture. Okay. okay. Then what next? So you have diagnosed an intraperitoneal injury, you have diagnosed an extraperitoneal injury. Yes. Both the patients has an associated erythral injury. So what will be management? Sir, in uh, intraperitoneal rupture, we will uh, uh, repair the bladder by uh, lower uh, lower abdominal incision, financial incision. We will repair the uh, uh, bladder in a single layer and with a catheter in situ, Foley's catheter. Uh, there is a no, Foley's catheter in situ. No, no, do ISPC. 
Yeah, yes, sir. We do an ECG because this patient has a urethral injury also, sir. Yes. Uh, an extraperitoneal injury. Uh, and for uh, extraperitoneal injury, uh, 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 if there is uh, an associated, uh, uh, sir, the extraperitoneal injury also there is associated urethral rupture. Yes. See, the management is same. In both the cases, you need to repair the injury. In intraperitoneal injury, you open the patient transperitoneal, transperitoneal. Okay, you go transperitoneal. If you are suspecting an extraperitoneal injury, you do not open the peritoneal cavity. You give us a midline uh, infra, uh, infra umbilical incision, go extraperitoneally, push the bladder down and repair the extraperitoneal injury, mostly the negative bladder injury. Okay, but after both the cases, you need to put a SPC. Only your approach is different. One is transperitoneal approach, one is extraperitoneal mm -hmm. approach. Both the cases, you need to use SPC. Okay. 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 Uh, uh, Dr. Sir, Dr. Anything... Any role for uh, railroad uh, repair? No. Any, 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 they should answer, uh, they should have any role repair? For... Any role for primary repair? Yes. No, sir. The no. idea of exploring in a patient of pelvic fracture associated urethral injury is threefold. The primary aim is to have a continuity, yes. erythroplasty. But by doing so, other aims are one is to prevent incontinence and to protect uh, potency of the patient because all the nerves which supply the penis and the artery supply the penis are there. So earlier it was done, we, um, uh, urologists used to do a primary anastomosis. The advantage of primary anastomosis is the chances of urethral stricture is less, but it had a very high rate of urinary incontinence and impotence. So that approach of primary railroading and primary repair is not done today. What some centers are doing, they are doing an endoscopic primary realignment. They are not going outside. They are doing a SPC. So once flexible scope is put through the SPC into the prostatic urethra, and once scope is put, uh, placed through the urethra uh, retrogradely. So they are trying to place a catheter with the help of this, both this flexible scope. This has shown promising results with a lower risk of urinary incontinence, importance, and stricture formation. But these needs are 24 hours serologist availability, 24 hours OT facilities, two flexiscopes and fluoroscopy, all these things. So most of the centers worldwide are not doing this. Some few centers of erythroplasty excellence, they are practicing this with good results. So they should tell in exam, I'll put a SPC, if not a periotal catheterization, wait for three months for the inflammation and the hematoma to subside. Let the inflammation subside, the prostate comes down, the distance between the two ends of the urethra reduces, then the patient goes for urethroplasty, at least after three months. That urethroplasty will be optical urethroplasty or open? That depends on the length and structure. Sometimes, if I can, if I can put a catheter through the defect, mostly it results in a short segment structure which is passable. The patient has a narrow passage. But most of the cases, if I cannot put a catheter, these patients will let out a complete block with a very large gap in between. So for first case, if the patient has a passable stricture, short stricture, he goes for optical internal urethrotomy. But if a patient has a complete block or complete block or long segment block, you'll need a perineal anastomotic urethroplasty. I think this is good enough. Uh, so this is it's enough for uh, MSDAB students. Okay, the basic approach. Sir, the I would like to summarize, uh, yes. sir, I'd like to summarize for yes, them. Yes, yes, please. A patient who comes with emergency, first do ATLS, stabilize the patient. After you have stabilized all other things, you look at the pelvis. You suspect pelvic injury if the patient has history of road traffic accident, high velocity accident, and you suspect a major accident. You see clinical signs of pelvic injury in the form of local bruise or echemosis, palpable bladder, 
blood it may test patient says he cannot pass urine then only you suspect and after that you do a, at least a x ray um, pelvis ap you confirm the fracture and if needed then you do a rgmc this should be the approach yes okay, sir okay so we go to the second scenario yes a very good yes billing Okay, Devan, this is a yes, second scenario. Sixty uh, years gentleman came to the emergency with acute retention of urine. How will you proceed? Okay, just one or two things. Two things you should ask this patient before you catheterize the patient. What are the things? Uh, is there a similar episode uh, in the past? Any associated trauma or not? Okay. Anything else? Uh, 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 the uh, LUTS symptoms uh, uh, were present or not? Okay. So one is see as a sixty years gentleman comes with acute retention in emergency. The first thing you should think this patient mostly having. a prostatic enlargement leading to acute urinary retention okay yes. so you need to know what other things can cause retention first thing and second is why this patient had sudden urinary retention so you yes. should ask the patient did you have any lower urinary symptoms in past if yes since how long and what was the treatment given second thing did you have any surgery related to urethra or prostate in the past because some patients will be having some intervention will come with stricture uh, urethral stricture third is any provoking factor like symptoms of uti any history of hernia surgery you are called into another department general surgery department uh, following a hemorrhagectomy or hernia surgery provoking factors is there in anything or not okay and medical history what are the medications he is on okay so this patient has significant lower urinary tract symptoms in the past since last one year he is on medications he does not give any history of any surgical intervention or any symptoms of uti what next uh, uh so in this patient uh, uh, we will go for examination if there is a uh, oh uh, there should be a palpable bladder in such a case we will catheterize a simple follis catheterization What are the things you should see? Just straight away catheterize. Mm. Okay, you have seen the patient is having a palpable bladder, so you confirm the patient is having retention, not any urea. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, if uh, if there is any urea, uh, uh, the palpable bladder should not have been palpable, sir. So, okay, you have confirmed the patient has retention. Yes. Sir. yes sir. uh uh so, so then uh, in the emergency the setting we should ask the patient regarding the retention so i can't hear you sir any other things you should ask the patient regarding retention specifically you should ask whether the patient has a painful uh, uh, or not oh okay sir yes sir uh if it's acute then sir. yes sir Uh, if it's acute then it is uh, it is usually painful sir and uh, yes that is the thing you should ask whether the patient has painful retention or not yes okay sir. yes sir. that has other implications i'll tell okay okay sir okay so the patient comes with painful retention you know it's an acute urinary retention yes okay. sir you have you examine the bladder is palpable anything you need to examine uh uh yes sir if there is uh, uh, many old people has bxo or phimosis or mietal stenosis uh, uh, associated so we will look for the penis also sir yes you should look for the phimosis or mietus yes okay after that you will catheterize yes sir okay so we have catheterized the patient and uh, 
around 500 ml of urine comes out the patient is relieved what next uh uh uh, if uh, this is an acute retention of urine, so uh, uh, we uh, probably there is a uh, prostatic hyperplasia. So in in such a case, uh, uh, usually we go for TURP of the patient. We should plan, yeah, not now, but not now, not now, not now, sir. But, uh, we need to investigate. We need to investigate yes, what is the degree, whether he has got acid renal failure or not. Patient yes. coming with acutation may have chronic urine for a long period. Yes, sir. He may have associated renal dysfunction. Yes, associated hydronephrosis may be there and the patient may have... It's, it's, it's not like that. The idea of asking this question whether this patient has an acute retention, that painful retention is that many patients will find they come to the emergency for the first time with retention. But if you take a proper history, you will see that patient has significant bothersome lower net symptoms since last two, three years. He can give a history of nocturnal aniridosis. Yes. That means the patient had a chronic retention. He had overflow incontinence at night. On top of that, maybe he had some acute uh, UTI. UTI. So the patient comes to the emergency. So if the patient has a palpable bladder without any pain or without any significant pain, you suspect this patient is having a chronic, chronic urinary retention. Okay, the first thing you need to differentiate is the patient has an acute retention or chronic retention because chronic. the management from the ear is totally different. If the patient has acute retention, you can just catheterize the patient, look for any hematuria and send the patient to other department. But if the patient has chronic retention, you cannot catheterize the patient in the emergency. Why? You have to admit the patient. Why? So... Uh... Uh, if uh, the bladder is uh, deflated, uh, uh, then hematuria may occur if, uh, sir, uh, rapidly What deflated. is that called? What hematuria? This is called decompression hematuria. Deco decompression hematuria. So, one of the dangers of catheterization in a chronic retention patient is decompression hematuria. Second danger is? Immaturia, if happens, patient will come back to you. But second danger is a post-obstructive diuresis. The patient might produce 4 liters, 5 liters, even we have seen 10 liters of urine per day. What will happen? The patient will develop hypotension, yeah. patient will yeah. develop PC electrolyte patient will have hypo hyponatremia, and this can kill the patient. So if you suspect the patient has a chronic retention, you have to admit the patient, catheterize the patient, monitor the urine output hourly to know the patient has having diuresis. So this presence or absence of pain is very, very important. In any patient who comes with ear with retention, you need to differentiate. Okay. So acute retention, you have catheterized, 500 ml has come out, you are happy. Then what? Any other things you need to do? Uh, so... Uh... So I have to investigate the cause of the acute retention, sir. See, you have to know, yes, this patient has prostatic enlargement. So you need to do a diary examination. You yes. need to check the size of the prostate. You need to check okay. what is the feel of the prostate, whether this is a benign feel or the, whether this or a, suspicion a rough, of malignancy. Or a malignancy, yes, sir. So as a JR, you have to do a diary in a patient who comes with retention. Okay. So you have catheterized, you have done a digital lateral examination, which showed uh, maybe around grade 3 prostatomegaly, which is normal in field. What next? So I will do a PSA. Uh, you will do a PSA. Why? Uh, so uh, it may, uh, in prosthetic carcinoma, it may be... Uh, see, see, uh, see. So never say I will do a PSA in emergency. Oh, okay. in emergency, sir. It may be first day elevated because they've done a DRE, patient's battery, acute retention. So, see, your idea is to know why this patient had acute retention. For that, you have to prove that this patient has prostatomegaly. For that, you have to rule out this patient is not having or having a urinary tract infection because why this patient had retention. So, you need to do a USG, you need to do 
uh, basic blood investigations, particularly urea creatinine to know the renal status of this patient. You need to do a, a urine culture. Yes, sir. You have found out this, that this patient does not have any urinary infection. Mm -hmm. You have proven that this patient has a normal uh, renal function. And you have by USG, you need to know what is the size of the prostate and most important, whether there is any associated hydroureteronephrosis. Suppose two patients, both patients has a 60 gram prostate. One has bilateral hydroureteronephrosis. One has normal upper tract. Does it mean different to you? Or is yes, it the sir. same? Sir, it is different, sir. Obstructive uropathy is present in the uh, bilateral hydronephrosis patient, and that patient should be planned for a TURP, sir. Okay, good. And second patient? Uh, the patient second, who does not have any hydronephrosis? Uh, we will ask if there are other uh, problems or not, sir. Uh, uh, the patient may have uh, symptoms of LUTS uh, or. Uh, there may be other uh, uh, reasons, just recurrent UTI, whether he is having or not. If there is a significant post void residual urine, and all these things we have to check. After that, we will plan if medical management would help, or uh, 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 we will, if he is symptomatic, we will do some medical management. If, uh, mm, yes. Yes. So this patient. You have done all the investigations, see 60 gram prostate. Uh, what medications you have in option? Uh, sir, we have uh, uh, alpha blockers, sir, and uh, sir, uh, five alpha reductase blockers, sir. What are the alpha blockers? Uh, sir, alpha uh, blockers are the tamsulosin, uh, uh, yes, sir, psilodosin, uh, tamsulosin, all these, sir. Okay. Uh, Third so one. They, okay, third one is alphogesin. And what is the, the what is uh, another thing you told is dutasteride, right? Yes, sir. Five alpha reductase in a meter. So do you know how does these yes, how how do these drugs act? Yes, sir. Alpha blockers uh, uh, they uh, are sympathetic blockers uh, who block the uh, who relax the prosthetic smooth muscles, sir as well as the uh, internal sphincter, internal urethral sphincter. Sir. And okay. the uh, five alpha detectors uh, actually uh, testosterone uh, active form is a one five dihydroxy testosterone, which is actually responsible for the enlargement of the prostate gland. So uh, by uh, giving five alpha detectors inhibitors, uh, uh, that is conversion of testosterone to uh, its active form is prevented and thus uh, the growth is arrested, sir. Okay. So this is a patient with a normal renal function, first time retention. You have started the patient on psilocin. Next what? Patient is on catheter. Uh, so we will uh, give, uh, give uh, after three weeks, we will give a trial by three? clamping the catheter. Three, three, three. How many days? Uh, so three weeks. No, no, no. For psilocin, you can give it after one day. For tamsulosin, for five days. Okay, and it's not three weeks. Uh, uh, so uh, sir, after giving tamsulosin, I was uh, sir. Okay, it's five days after tamsulosin. Okay, okay. So you have given a. You have given a catheter free trial, patient through scenarios, patient voids, patient does not void, then what? Uh, uh, sir, I can't hear the question, sir. One scenario, you have given a trial. Hello, sir. One patient is passing urine, the other person is not able to pass urine. Patient can void. Second scenario is patient cannot void. Yes, sir. Uh, if the patient can void, we will remove the catheter. If the patient cannot void, we will retain the catheter for uh, another uh, five days. Sir. Then you have already removed the catheter. You have the catheter, ask the patient to drink water and one patient can pass, another patient cannot pass. What is the next step? So, we will, uh, the patient who cannot pass urine, we have to recatheterize. Then? 
then what uh, so then again continue the medical management and uh, uh, after sir uh, the five days uh, for tamsulosin we will again uh, do the clamping sir. see there are two situations the patient comes you have given a voiding trial patient can void okay fine you continue the patient on medical management and follow this patient for his symptoms and development any retention in future okay if he is happy with medication you can continue with medication second scenario is patient cannot void there is no point giving another trial you can straight away ask the patient for a tube rp okay so if a patient cannot void once this patient goes into a category of refractory urinary retention okay if i have given a trial in proper condition suppose a patient has uti without knowing uti and uti is the cause of retention without okay. diagnosing uti you have given a trial and the patient fails that is not a proper situation you have given a trial in improper situation and uh, so sir hello sir yes sir 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 ah, yes sir yes uh, sir uh, for students i i should summarize uh, yes, yes. any other courses you want to ask sir no nee, okay it's all right for retention uh, one should they should also be knowing the other cause of retention like it can be neuro in elderly neurogenic bladder yes uh, so uh, other cause of retention should also be uh, talked of okay but main yes. point in a 60 year old gentleman should be a primarily a bph so uh, dibayan yes, any sir. patient comes to emergency your idea is to why this patient had retention so 60 years first diagnosis is prostatic pathology yes sir second you need to rule out this patient does not have any chronic retention third is you you need to rule out that this patient does not have any absolute indication of surgery okay that, that is the main thing so you you have taken a good history how long the patient has this complication how long did this patient has any retention before what are the other medical complications condition sometimes the patient is diabetic since 20 years sometimes the patient has a history of spinal surgery sometimes the patient has associated parkinson's disease or any other neurologic disease that is important otherwise you will give you will do a trp patient will not void so you rule out other causes of retention in elderly patients once you have do the uh, do that you rule out whether the patient has a malignancy or not by doing a dre you do a urine culture you catheterize the patient and after you catheterize you give a voiding trial if the patient voids he goes for medical management if the patient cannot void then you have you have the option of trp this is for acute urinary retention but if the patient has chronic urinary retention you have to admit the patient you do not catheterize the patient in emergency admit the patient catheterize the patient watch for hematuria watch for diuresis and if you and do a usg to rule out any renal function abnormality rule out any upper tract damage in the form of hydrolytic nephrosis okay if the patient has these two complications like upper tract damage or renal function disorientation this go this patient should not be subject to any catheter free trial this is an absolute indication of surgery the next question is when you should do the surgery you should not do surgery at least prior to 3 weeks of catheterization because you need to stabilize the renal function you need to give rest to the bladder you need to uh, give adequate time to the bladder for the bladder tonicity to come back okay any patient who has a creatinine more than 2 if you do a trp complication chance is very high so that is in short about uh, management of uh, retention because of prostate okay yes sir you have covered the whole part there are uh... Dr. Achar ji, sir, anything to add? Yeah. Any sir, yes, uh, sir. Uh, I just wanted to yes. ask in sir uh, previous uh, scenario, sir in RT, sir uh, yeah. bladder and urethral rupture can occur simultaneously, sir. Can. Yes, yes. 
blood or atrial rupture can occur simultaneously in 10% mm. cases so okay. that is the idea of doing an emergency rgu in a patient who is suspected suspected to have any atrial injury okay so if the patient has a bladder associated bladder injury and you miss that and you do only catheterization or spc sometimes it may not help particularly in patients who has a intraperitoneal injury or large extraperitoneal injury so you need to rule out this patient as having a associated bladder injury mm. extraperitoneal injury patient might come up with a pelvic abscess or uh, yes. pelvic collection of uh, urine extravasation collection extravasated yeah. in yeah. the perineal region yes yes thank you sir okay and another thing yeah. uh, in uh, acute urine retention is um you you do not do psa what was devan saying never do psa in a patient yes. who has uh, who has uh, who is in emergency with retention the idea yeah. is there are many causes of raised psa one of the yeah. causes is malignancy but there are many causes if the patient has uti if the patient has any retention if the patient has any prostatic infarct and one of the cause of infarct one of the effect of infarct is retention so a patient comes in emergency with retention he has every possibility that he will be having a elevated psa so never ever do psa in the emergency setting catheter is a patient rule out uti if there is uti treat uti and you should do psa after 4 weeks because the half life to clear the, if it is elevated because of some other reasons it will take 3 to 4 weeks for it to come to its base level so the psa in emergency setting does not tell you anything you have to do it after 4 weeks never in exam say i'll do a psa in emergency setting never so when so do you do a trash biopsy sir see role of trash biopsy is different in, in ideal situation you have done a psa and you see the psa is more than 4 or you do a dre you find a nodule or the prostatic uh, is not normal so it's not only trust you should do a trust biopsy if you think the patient might be having a malignancy the indications of doing a trust biopsy is one is elevated psa traditionally taken as four for you it should be four and second indication is if you have a palpable uh, nodule on dre sometimes the usg the radiology says heterogeneous or nodular prostate that is not an indication for trust <clears throat> only two indications are if you find a nodule in dre and if the psa in proper condition is elevated then you do a trust and trust guided biopsy roshankar there is a question in the chat box someone has asked in in trauma scenario what is the role of ct scan to diagnose urethral injury uh yes sir so there are some indications for trauma trauma not yeah. for pelvic fracture that is one thing second is if an x ray you find that some bony spicule is there in the pelvis but you are not sure whether this is injuring the bladder or not so in those cases if you do a contrast with a delayed film to see whether this spicule is injuring the bladder neck or inside the bladder neck that is an indication yeah in fact uh, now that uh, they are managing pelvic fracture with some fixation so they yes. do prefer a ct scan of the pelvis to have a 3d reconstruction to see yes, the exact uh, displacement of the pelvic fracture so uh, ct is part of a uh, trauma uh, scenario where you can do a ct scan to assess the pelvic fracture just for urethral rupture per se uh, isolated urethral rupture ct will not be a very good investigation you can diagnose by rg but if you have other indication for doing a ct scan then yes ct scan can uh, if you use a contrast then you can diagnose otherwise uh, i think for isolated rupture urethra a ct may not be uh, no it's not that the exact type of injury yes. sir uh, yes. sir one more question sir yes, sir, yes. now they we do a trust uh, trust biopsy or a transperineal template biopsy sir so that is also in use transperineal biopsy yes. for prostate yes yes transperineal transperineal yes. template uh, biopsy prostate most of the centers are doing a trans biopsy because this does not need any anesthesia is very easy to do 
but nowadays few centers are coming up who are doing a transperineal biopsy which is an added advantage of uh, detecting more malignancies particularly if the malignancy is the anterior lobe or at the apex but uh, it needs anesthesia that is the most important thing so most of the centers in india and worldwide is not doing a transperineal biopsy they are doing transperineal but yes if you have the facility and expertise it is definitely an option transperineal but in exam don't say transperineal in the first go say transrectal biopsy if the examiner asks any other way you can do yes you can say so i can go for a transperineal biopsy also it is helpful particularly in patients who is suspected to have anterior malignancy or malignancy in the apical region मल्टीपैरामेट्रिक एम आर आई बिफोर डूइंग एनी ट्रांस बायोपसी so multiparametric mri can suggest these are the areas in the prostate which has high likelihood of harboring the malignancy so if you see the patient has areas which are mostly anterior or in the apical region you have a better option with transperitoneal biopsy okay 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 thank you sir Because if you are going from the rectum you are seeing the peripheral zone or peripheral zone first which is the most common site of malignancy that is the idea people started uh, transrectal biopsy okay uh, dr acharya ji any comment we have uh, gone through the whole scenario dr anadi acharya ji uh, hello ha uh, good morning Doctor has uh, covered very well the discussion was. Yes. The approach is important. Yes, in exam the approach is important. How we approach the patient. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So someone has asked about MRI. You see, MRI is not the uh, investment choice in emergency setting for diagnosing urethral injury. No. Yes, MRI okay. is only done in chronic uh, situations, yeah. particularly for before MRI is not the investigation. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Sharma. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Answer very well. Very good. Thank you, Japan. You answered very well. Okay. Ah, okay. Sir, thank you. Ah, uh, all the bara bo. Two points. Ah, potassium bara bo.